Hello, I'm Edin, the education program leader for the National Music Center, coming at you today from Studio Bell. It has now been officially 10 years since I started using musical instruments to teach about sound science at the National Music Center. And one thing I can tell you for sure, sound is tricky. Another thing I can tell you is that machines that help me see the patterns of sound have been very helpful to me understanding what I'm hearing. And a lot of these sound visualizers can be found online. So this episode will mark the first in our series that I will call Sound Tech Tools You Can Find Online. And this week, we're going to look at the oscilloscope. If you were to go on the internet and search what does sound look like, you will find a lot of images of these squiggly lines. These are called waveforms. Now, while sound doesn't actually look like that, it doesn't squiggle through the air, waveforms are very useful for people studying sound, or electricity, or light, seismology, biology, physics, mathematics. Waveforms are really useful. Oscilloscopes will take a sound signal, or an electric signal, and create the image of a waveform. Now, before we look at the oscilloscope, let's take a peek at the sound detection technology that we have built into our bodies our ears. Your ears are always surrounded by this gas we call air. When anything moves in this giant air pool, it jostles the air bits around. When I suddenly move this way, it squishes all the gas bits together, and those gas bits squish the gas bits beside them, and beside them, and beside them, and this energy moves in that direction in a motion that we call a wave. On the other hand, if I were to suddenly pull this way, it pulls the gas bits apart, which pull the gas bits beside them and beside them, and this pull travels that way in the movement that we also call a wave. Now so far, just doing single pushes or pulls does not stir anything in the ear. If our ears detected every single push or pull, it would constantly bombard us with sound. So what the ear is looking for is a pattern of back and forth movements that we call a vibration. So these waves of pushes and pulls are channeled into our ear and interact with this little bit called the eardrum. So when the squishy part or the high pressure part of the wave hits the eardrum, it pushes in. And when the low pressure or the pulley part of the wave hits the ear, it pulls out. Now let's say we were to attach a little tiny pencil to the eardrum and scroll paper beside it. Then as it vibrates, it would draw a little squiggly line on that roll of paper. What that line would show you is the same pattern that is shown to us in an oscilloscope. Okay, so here is our first oscilloscope at academo.org slash demos slash virtual oscilloscope. And there in the middle is the squiggly line or the waveform. As you can see, it's pretty chaotic as the waveforms zip across the screen. And this is because most sounds we hear are vibrating hundreds if not thousands of times a second. But there are a few things about this waveform that stand out, like the difference between consonant sounds and vowels. One nice thing about this oscilloscope is this freeze live input button, so I can make my e, and it freezes the waveform so I can look at it more closely. So this oscilloscope is neat. It's cool to see all the lines waving up and down, but it's happening so fast that it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. So like I said, this is what we would see if we attached a pencil to our ear and ran paper beside it while it was vibrating back and forth. Most sounds are actually quite complex. There's a lot of different waveforms competing with each other to make your ear wiggle one way or the other. But I could attach the pencil instead to a speaker. Then you get something called a signal generator. This signal generator can be found at signalgenerator.sciencemusic.org. When I click in this gray portion of the screen, it produces what we would consider a pure tone or a sine wave. Using this pure tone, it's a bit easier to understand what the oscilloscope is actually showing us. Not only the wave's shape, but its frequency and its amplitude. First, I'm going to change the frequency. Look at the changes in the waveform and listen to the changes in the sound. I hope you could hear the pitch going up as we increase the frequency. 
And also as we moved up our frequency, you could see a lot more waves moving into the space. This is because from left to right, the oscilloscope is showing us time. Frequency means how often something happens. With sound, frequency is measured in hertz. Beside this number was the little letters H and Z. 463 hertz. 2551 hertz. Hertz is a measurement of cycles per second. A cycle in this case is the waveform from resting, up, down, and back to resting. So when it says 101 hertz, the speaker is moving from resting, pushing out, going back, down, and back to resting 101 times per second. Humans can hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Although 20 hertz is extremely hard to hear, and as you age, the top number starts dropping as well. I stop hearing sound around here, 14,329 hertz. This happens to you no matter what. But if you want it to happen faster, you can listen to a lot of extremely loud sounds without protecting your ears. The more you know. This brings me to the other control I have on this signal generator, which is amplitude. I'm going to change the amplitude, and again, what do you see and what do you hear? I'm going to lock the frequency so that it doesn't move up and down. So amplitude is a measurement of how far something moves away from its resting position. The higher the amplitude, the further the speaker is moving. This directly relates to the air pressure, or the volume. So frequency is related to pitch, and amplitude is related to volume. One more thing on this signal generator I want to show you is this button down here where I can choose either a pure or complex waveform. Pure gives us the sine wave, whereas complex puts a bunch of sine waves together, which changes the shape of the waveform and the timbre of the sound. Here's one more oscilloscope. This one is found at oscilloscope.sciencemusic.org. They actually renamed it a musoscope. This oscilloscope takes a different approach. First of all, you can record your sound so you can really study the waveform. Let's look at a waveform. And there we are. Wait, is this a waveform? So yes, these blobs still are waveforms. The pencil is still attached to your eardrum, or in this case, the microphone in the computer. Really, this is what it looks like when you slow down the paper that's scrolling by. This paints a very different picture of the sound. Down here we can see this stretch is one second, whereas before we were looking at milliseconds. This is the kind of waveform I stare at all day when I'm editing these videos. The nice thing about this program is I can then zoom in on the waveform. And now we can see something that looks more familiar. I can play back this sound too. Let's look at a waveform. Now this oscilloscope allows me to select part of the sound. So I just want to listen to this. Wave. Change that. Waveform. Form. Form. So I can really study what part of the word gives me what shape of waveform. And perhaps most fun of all, I can turn it into a loop. Waveform. 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 Wave. 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 wave at a wave. Look at a wave. Look at a look at a look at a look at a waveform. Neat. So I hope you will have fun playing with these sound tech tools you can find online. Experiment with your voice. Me 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 me. Try an instrument. Or other household objects. And if you want to dive deeper into waveforms, I found this website very helpful. It goes quite in depth and has nice demonstrations on the side. Though if you're allergic to science jargon, this site might leave you a little bit itchy. We will, of course, leave links to all of these websites in the description below. And until next time, happy exploring. Wave, wave. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and or subscribe. Also, the National Music Center is a charity that relies on donations. So if you have the means and feel like it, please go to studiobell.ca slash donate.